Good evening. You are welcome in the zoology class of Society of Carrier Technology and Jan Vikas Mahasabha, Lucknow. Today we will talk about nucleus, the very important cell organelle of the cell. Normally, a single cell has a single slightly darker staining organelle called nucleus. Sometimes we can use some stain for it. For example, hematoxylene, acetocarmine, and fulgen steel. Then the nucleus becomes is still much more darker so it becomes easier to discriminate between the nucleus and cytoplasm. Normally in most of the cells a nuclear membrane is present such cells are called eukaryotes. In which a nuclear membrane is present. But there are some primitive cells in which there is no nuclear membrane. The genetic material DNA remains attached with the cell membrane in a coiled coil form. Such cells are called prokaryotes. Normally, in a single cell, there is a single nucleus, but maybe sometimes more than one nucleus may be found in a single cell. And that type of thing may be of two types. Either all nuclei are of the same type as it happens in case of a protozoan opelina. Here there are many nuclei, but all the nuclei are of the same type. But still there is one more situation where the nuclei are of two types. One, a larger macronucleus it is generally kidney shaped and it is vegetative in nature it does not take part in cell reproduction and another type of nuclei are smaller they are called micronuclei For example, in case of paramecium, we get one macronucleus. In paramecium, there are many species. In paramecium chordatum, we get one macronucleus, one micronucleus. Whereas in another species, paramecium aurelia, there is one macronucleus and two smaller micronuclei. There is one more species, paramecium multi-micronucleatum, in which there are one macronucleus and even a dozens of micronuclei in the same cell. There are many components in a nucleus. First of all, there is a nuclear membrane. When we study by an optical microscope, there is a single nuclear membrane but when we observe it under an electron microscope it is a double membrane like an envelope it is also called nuclear envelope in between the nuclear envelope at many places there are certain pores and they are called 
nuclear pore complex. Then the fluid material found in nucleus is called nucleoplasm. And then there is a dark staining thread like structure. Its structure varies during different stages of the cell cycle. During interphase, it is in the form of a network which is called chromatin network. Still, a nucleus have a still more darker component which is called nucleolus. There may be one or more than one nucleoli in a single nucleus. At the time of cell division, this chromatin network splits into distinct thread-like structures which are called the chromosomes. And these chromosomes are having a single centromere. During some stages of cell division, they contain two thread-like components which are called chromatids. For example, in metaphage state, prophage and metaphage state. But in anaphage and telophage state, this primary constriction or centromere divides. So, two chromosomes are formed, each having a single chromatid. Now, let us see the detail about this, these chromosomes. Chromosomes are the bearer of hereditary character. They are made up of DNA and histone protein. And for a pretty long time, it was a mystery that how the DNA and histone components are assembled, packaged in a chromosome. There are two views in some of the plant cells and in polytene chromosomes of some animals also. Like a rope which is made up of many transversely running thread-like structures. Many DNA components may be there in a single chromatid. Whereas in most of the cells, the DNA chromosome is made up of a single DNA thread. but which is coiled and this coiling has a three levels. So let us see the structure of these chromosomes in detail. So the position of uh, centromere or primary constriction may vary in a chromosome. So on the basis of location of this primary constriction, the Chromosomes may be divided into four morphological types. For example, if the centromere is present just at the terminus, such chromosomes are called telocentric. If it is present near the tip, it is called acrocentric. If the centromere is present in the middle, then such chromosomes are called metacentric. And if the centromere is present slightly displaced from the middle place, such chromosomes are called submetacentric. Now, one more interesting fact is there that in at least one or maybe sometimes more than one chromosome of the complete set, for example, in human being, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes. So, some of the chromosomes may have Along with this primary constriction or centromere, there may be another constriction which is called secondary constriction. But 
spindle fibers attach at primary constriction but they do not attach at the secondary constriction so there may be bending during anaphage or telophage due to this primary constriction but there is no bending at the secondary constriction some of the secondary constriction may act as nucleolar organizer nucleus organizer so they help in formation of the nucleolus and there may be a small part attached with this uh, it is called satellite body so those chromosomes which have a satellite body they are called satellite chromosome now the most important thing is how the dna and histone proteins are packaged to form a chromosome earlier few years ago some of the scientists used to say that at certain stages the chromosomes may show some granular structure which are called chromomeres these chromomeres were supposed to be the site of genes but in 1974 Kornberg gave the concept of nucleosome he said that like a garland made up of many beads the chromosome is not like a bead on a string it is like a string on bead suppose we have some beads but they do not have a core through it so how can i pass the thread or wire from to it in such case that thread or string may be wrapped over the bead so here also in chromosome at certain distance there are four types of histone proteins and for each type of histone protein there are two globules so there are four types of histone proteins and four histone proteins are just behind that huh so total eight this is h 2a this is h 2b this is h 3 and this is h 4 so there are four types of histone proteins and each type there are two marble like ball like structures they are attached and this complete structure is called a nucleosome now the dna over this beads it makes a two spiral turns one turn then another turn made up of about 200 nucleotides and the two ends are again clipped by another histone which is called h1 histone so there are four types of histones h2 a h2 b h3 h4 and each two balls and dna is wrapped above it for two turns and again the two ends of dna are is again clamped by another h1 histone protein and the part of dna present in between two nucleosomes they are called linker dna
the story does not end here. Two more levels of uh, coiling are there. Let us see what that. So after this spring-like coiling of nucleosome, the DNA is further folded in such a spring-like fashion and it makes a cylinder. That cylinder is called solenoid and here it, each turn of DNA there are six nucleosomes hmm? every here and there is one more folding you must might have seen the bottle brush which is used for uh, cleaning of uh, milk feeding bottle of young kids similarly here also this whole structure is further folded to form some bottle brush like structure and each is made up of the same solenoid. So this type of packing is called scaffold. Now this is about brief of chromosome structure. In the nucleus we have some nuclear pores also and these nuclear pores can be seen two ways either we can see it from lateral or we can see it from the surface view if we observe it in a surface view we observe that there is a central plug and around that central plug we have two annuli or ring and like the needles of a wheel of cycle here also eight spokes are there one two three four five six seven eight connecting the central plug with the peripheral annuli the thickness is about 80 nanometer when we observe it from lateral side you can see here the central plug and on the two sides this is the upper annuli this is lower annuli space is 80 nanometer the two nuclear membranes and in between the nuclear membrane there is one more membrane which is called nuclear lamina here are actually the chromatin threads attach and sometimes some particles may be found just at the surface so then this is the nuclear pore complex and last there is one more point in multinucleated cell there may be two situation one cenocytic as in case of fungi here the development starts from a single cell the nucleus divides one into two two into four four into eight and so on nucleus goes on dividing but the cell does not divide no cell partitions develop. So a multinucleated structure develops. It is called a cenocytic structure. Cenocytic is found in case of fungi. In case of uh, skeletal muscles or rotifera or ascaris epidermis, we get syncytium. Actually it is similar in structure but the development is different. It develops from a multicellular organization Many cells were pr present initially, but the cell partitions dissolved. So it became like this. It is called syncytium. So finally, once again, I would like to say you that this is your program. And if you have any query, you can freely ask us. If you need information about any other topic, you can make a request. 
within 72 hours our team will try to develop the complete text and uh, display it for you so for with this thank you very much see you tomorrow